Okay, and welcome to video number two, in which we're going to be having an introduction to uh, evolution at both a molecular, so a DNA level, and to uh, morphological evolution, so that's the evolution of anatomy. But before I start really on that, I wanted to highlight that evolution really boils down to three fundamental things, which I'm going to be introducing over the course of the coming videos. And because everything relies on everything else, I wanted to first provide a quick overview of those three key points, those three things that we need to be present for evolution to occur. The first of these is variation. So among individuals within any population, there is variation in both the morphology, so it's anatomy, the physiology, and the behavior of individuals. As an example, these gorgeous spiders on this slide here are all actually members of the same species. They can interbreed with each other. So that's following a thing called the biological species concept. We consider them the same species, but you can see that they vary greatly in terms of their appearance. So variation is a really important point. The second really important point, the other second thing that we need for evolution is heredity. And this is something that was a bit trickier to work out, especially the mechanism by which it occurred. But the underlying idea behind heredity is actually relatively simple. And that idea is that offspring resemble their parents more than they resemble unrelated individuals. That doesn't come as a massive surprise to us Right? We know that um, brothers and sisters often look alike and they often look more similar to their parents than they do to other people. How traits are inherited, however, can be quite complex. But here we've got a nice simple example for you based on the colour of the eyes of a fruit fly, a thing called Drosophila, which is used quite a lot as a model organism for studying genetics. And it does demonstrate in this example that inheritance can be very clear cut. So we have our adults with red and white eyes within this species and in the offspring, eyes aren't pink. They're not a combination of the colors from their, from both parents. Rather, they are only, they, the, the offspring have either red eyes or white eyes. And that's a clear cut example of heredity. And then finally, we have selection. So selection will, is something we're gonna be covering in some depth later in another video, but it is key to evolution. And in short, all it says is that some forms of organism are more successful at surviving and therefore reproducing than others in a given environment. And indeed, um, the survival element is probably not as uh, important as the reproduction if you get the reproduction in before the <laughs> end of the survival. So, uh, for example, some of the uh, pressures that can lead to selection may be uh, predation. There's an example shown here on the left-hand side of a fine uh, insect eating another insect. This is an ant eating, I guess it looks like a praying mantis to me, but I'm not 100% sure. Or, for example, through pathogens. So here's an example of a ant on the right-hand side of this slide um, with a fungal pathogen growing out of its head. It's kind of freaky. Also, the basis for the um, the 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 um, the uh, bad guys. That's not quite the right phrase. The situation in the movie "Girl with All the Gifts" is actually based on this fungus here. It's a bit of a bleak movie, but fairly cool. Just thought I'd mention it. So this this um, occurs in uh, living uh, communities and is called natural selection. We'll be learning all about that in another one of the videos. So I'm gonna finish this um, uh, video by highlighting just a few things that we um, we kind of have covered in, previously in this course with Giles, um, but ha I'll be highlighting how those play into the, our, our understanding of evolution. So as I would imagine you're aware by now, organisms have a long molecule of DNA in every cell. I'm ignoring those pesky viruses for our purposes here. And those uh, molecules store the genetic information for that organism. So that is subject to molecular evolution that DNA can change. Selection, as I've highlighted, however, primarily happens at the level of organisms in a population and in the world of, for example, animals and complex uh, eukaryotes. 
Um, that occurs on the organisms within a population uh, based on their morphology. Okay. So I've put some definitions for you on the slide here of um, what a genome is and what morphology is, just in case we're unclear on that. But it's very important at this point, I think, to note that the response to selection occurs in the genetic information of an organism, its genome. That's the total genetic information of an individual which it inherits from its parent. So this is true. Um, for both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. You've met those previously in this course. And within both of these organisms, no matter which way you cut it, um, there is DNA um, in the cells of these creatures that's held in chromosomes. Any stretch can be split into genes. These are the functional units of DNA. This is all stuff that you've covered previously in, um, in this course and genes code for proteins and proteins are the things that do much of the work in any given cell so that's a real kind of kind of these are the basics of life but the the important take home point of this is that when we're talking about selection we are often talking about that happening especially in these complex creatures eukaryotes at the level of a um of a whole organism but the response to it is at the level of the dna within the cells of that organism okay that that distinction isn't quite so clear cut for prokaryotes for what it's worth So while selection occurs on organisms, it ultimately causes changes to the genome across generations. So we have this genome uh, or genotype, and that creates the phenotype. The phenotype is the observable manifestation of a specific genotype. So it's basically the external appearance and may include in some definitions the behavior of an organism. You can see a couple of um, definitions on this slide if you want to um, look at those in a tiny bit more detail. So molecular and morphological evolution are linked in animals, for example, and complex organisms, uh, other eukaryotes, often multicellular eukary eukaryotes. The molecular and morphological evolution are linked by an organism's development. That's somet sometimes called its ontolo ontogeny. Sorry. So we can study, if we want to, when embryos are developing under the control of a particular gene. On the left-hand side, you can see um, some fly embryos here where the expression of a particular gene is colored in or, or tagged with a fluorescent dye. So we can actually see when that gene is leading to the development of part of this embryo. We can then use that to create a, a link between genes and the adult morphology. So as shown on the right here, once more in just Drosophila, this fruit fly, we can actually start identifying which genes impact on which parts of the developing organism, and then ultimately what uh, morphology, what anatomy, or what phenotype they cause in the adult. This is a really, really complex um, chain of events, and we don't have anywhere near a full picture yet. So to show, to demonstrate that complexity, for example, the extent to which a trait responds during development to environmental variation is itself under genetic control. This is a thing called plasticity. So it's really, really complicated trying to tie DNA into phenotype. But it, and indeed, there's a, a whole branch of um, the, of science, the study of development, that is really important. Um, that is dedicated to studying these links, which I'm not going to be mentioning any further here. But bear in mind that that is how um, many of the changes that we see in populations of organisms at the macro scale come about and how selection feeds back through to the molecules of an organism. So I hope that's relatively clear and I will see you in our next video where we're going to be looking at variation, its sources and its heritable nature. See you in a second.